What's up, Abby fam? How's everybody doing? It's going to be a good one today, huh? You like that, H? The Hey Abby merch. <laughs> um, this one specifically um, was, I don't know, it was a limited time release. I don't think it's available anymore. But we periodically release merch, you know, around sales, events, um, different holidays, etc. cetera. Uh, we kind of release merch in batches, you know, for, for season. So it's kind of like seasonal merch, basically. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Hope everybody's week starting off well. What's up, Bill? Um, real quick, let's get into the products. That way I can get into uh, cloning. It's going to be a good one today. I'm talking about cloning. I've been getting a lot of questions about cloning and, you know, the entire process. Um, there's a lot that goes into it, so it's going to be, you know, a little bit more of an extended coverage on cloning and the process. So, um, yeah, let's go over the products real quick, you know, let you know what we got going on, what we have to, off have to offer, and then I'll get into uh, cloning. What up, Nemesis? So um, our first product rock to market, kind of our flagship product is the Hey Abby OG edition. Uh, the OG edition is a fully incorporated automated grow box. Uh, it's hydroponic growing, uses deep water culture system to grow, um, has everything you need to grow inside the box. Um, it uses an intake and exhaust fan via the algorithm to kind of control the environment. Um, there's an air pump to keep your roots oxygenated. There's obviously a light. Um, it's a really good Samsung, uh, using Samsung LMH301 uh, LED diodes. So it's really powerful, has a great spectrum for growing plants. Um, it also incorporates, you know, a water reservoir. Obviously in deep water culture, your plants living in, you know, water. Um, so it uses, you know, help oxygenate the roots, keep the roots healthy. Um, there is inside the reservoir, there is a set of sensors that tells you the level of your water as well as your level, uh, your temperature level of the water. Um, there's an ultrasonic sensor that measures the plant height. Um, that's really cool. The OG edition features a dial display. So there's a display on the dial that tells you your environmental and water statistics. That's really cool. You can check on everything with, you know, just by looking at the box. Um, it also has a viewing window that's magnetic. That's really cool. Um, it has a USB plug that allows you to use any accessory that you would like to use. Um, and that's, you know, the basics of the OG box. Um, later we came out with the 420 edition, which is a little bit more affordable option to allow more users to get into growing their own medicine. Um, there is some differences between the 420 and OG edition, um, such as the light, the light's a little bit different, not quite as powerful as the OG light. Um, there isn't quite as many sensors in the 420 box as far as water sensors, plant height sensor, um, as well as the dial. There's no um, display on the 420 dial, and there's also no viewing window on the 420 edition. Uh, late last year, we introduced or announced, I should say, the black edition, which is here to the right. Um, it's really nice, sleek black finish. Um, it's kind of the most powerful pro style growers box. Um, the light is more powerful. It also features a ultraviolet and infrared spectrum, which help increase cannab cannabinoid production. So, you know, it will help get you a little more, a little better quality. Um, it's the same style of growing, deep water culture, same sensors as the OG. Um, the big, another big difference between the Black Edition and the OG and or 420 is the uh, USB hub. So the Black Edition has a USB hub that allows you to use up to three accessories at one time. As opposed to the OG and 420, you can only use one accessory at a time. The Black Edition also has an upgraded dial with an um, upgraded Abbey mascot. We call it the Abbey Witcher. Black Edition also has uh, a different wood finish, and it also has the viewing window, same as the OG. So those are the three products that we offer. We also have a full line of accessories to utilize in your box. Um, you can see here I have the Smart Fan, Smart Humidifier. There's a Hey Abbey Bud Cam you can use as well. Um, we offer, you know, everything you basically need to grow. The accessory kit's really good, comes with all kinds of training and plant materials. You can use a train, um, a trellis, plant ties, scissors, a uh, pH meter that runs off of Bluetooth, so it automatically in, um, uploads the readings from your meter into the app. That's really cool. Um, and all boxes operate off of, operate off of the Hey Abby app. Um, the app's really cool. 
um, walks you through how to grow everything that needs to be done to your plant and when it's done to your plant. Like I said, it gives you instructions on how to do it and when to do it. Um, there's also a social media feature in the app. It's called the trend section. It's really cool. It allows you to post pictures of your plant, you know, chop it up with other like-minded growers, Abbey growers, and kind of give feedback or get feedback on your plant. Um, integrated into the app is a messaging function, which is known as the one-on-one growth support. Um, one-on-one growth support is basically a way to, you know, contact me or other grow um, support technicians and allows you to get help with any, you know, issues or questions you have with your plant. Um, so it's really cool, especially, you know, if you have an issue you're not sure about, whether you're a beginner grower and need help or a seasoned grower that can't really put your finger on, you know, what's going on with the plant or issues you're having, um, you can always use the grow support and reach out to us and get help with the plant. Um, the one on one grow support is part of the subscription package that we offer. Um, the subscription comes with the grow support as well as all the materials you need to grow your plant, nutrients, um, a new grow basket, carbon filters to keep the smell down um and a grow sponge from foam collar etc so everything you need to basically grow a plant gets delivered to your door which is you know really convenient it takes a lot of the legging and guesswork out of finding nutrients coming up with a feeding regimen and schedule etc etc so um, us as a company we try to make growing as easy and as enjoyable as possible you know we're a community-based company so you know, we want to make things um, as accessible and as easy for you um, and help you be successful. You know, that's my whole goal. And that's our goal as a company. We want to have our growers be successful and enjoy growing the plant, you know, kind of avoid the headache that growing sometimes can be um, really kind of separates us from other methods of growing, growing in a tent, um, et cetera. So that's basically, you know, what we have to offer. Um, we're currently having a really big 420 sale guys. Uh, I'm sure you're aware, but um, some crazy discounts, um, biggest discounts that we've offered to date. So make sure you check out our 420 sale on the website um, and, you know, take advantage of the savings that are being offered to you guys. Uh, I want to do want to get into cloning. Cloning is a big thing that I've been getting a lot of questions about lately. Um, it's, you know, a great way to have a perpetuated, perpetuated grow, you know, I mean, constantly having plants ready, but it's not as simple as just, you know, cutting off the plant, planting it and letting it grow roots. There's a lot that goes behind it. Um, and I want to get into that and help you guys, you know, be able to cut your own clones. That way you can save your genetics, keep your genetics going um, and, you know, perpetuate your growth. That way you're not waiting around for seeds to pop or a clone to be delivered, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> so let me say what's up to a few people real quick. What up, Sage? What up, Jag Bomb? What up, Film F? Danny NKC H. Who else we got? Rocco. That's what's up. Rocco got two subscriptions. You don't have codes. Um, they are in the order email. So in the order email, you'll get the subscription codes. You put those codes into the settings page where it says digital, uh, service validity, put those codes in there and you're good to go. What up, Phil? What up, Conrad Hart? All right. So cloning, um, cloning is, you know, you would think it'd be an easy process, but it's not as easy. You think it was as, as it is. Um, first of all, you need to have a designated space to cut your clones. If you're growing in the abbey, um, you can't, you know, really just cut the clones and put them in the abbey while the plant is growing, especially if you plan on flipping the flower. Um, you can't you don't want to flower out or start flowering clones. Um, you know, that's not optimal. So you will need kind of a separate space to house your clones. Um, you're going to need a light. And what I have here, you know, this is basically a clone setup. This is kind of um, the largest ones they offer. This is kind of what I'm used to using what they use in commercial settings a lot of time. Basically what this is, is a bottom tray with a dome on it, right? The dome contains a humidity, which the clones really need since there's no root system. They're basically intaking water through the leaves and through the pores of the plant. Um, inside this tray, there's an insert that houses your clones. You can see the clones are sitting here in the insert. Uh, these are some sticky bun clones I cut uh, about two weeks ago now. So they're just starting to root. Pull them out, show you guys real quick. So you can see I got some roots coming out of the bottom. I don't know if you guys can see that close enough, but they're just, you know, they're just pushing roots, starting to really fill out the roots. So nice and healthy, good clones. Um, so the process of cloning, um, there's a lot of steps to it. The first being, um, you know, obviously cutting your clone off of the plant. Personally, um, I like to lollipop my plant just before putting it into flower, about two, three days before flipping into flower. And while I lollipop, 
I use a lot of those weaker, thinner branches or branches that aren't reaching the canopy. Um, I'll cut those off and use those as a clone. That's where clones, that's where these guys came from. Um, when you do cut the clone, you're going to want to cut it and immediately put it in a, in a cup of water. It doesn't, you know, distilled water, tap water. It's, it's the, the specifics don't really matter. You just need to keep it in water. Um, what happens a lot of times is people will cut the clone and kind of just set them down and leave them out in the open. Um, what happens is they catch an air bubble or an embolism and that air bubble gets into the main um, stem or stalk of the plant, which is hollow. It kind of works like a straw. That's how the plant, you know, transports water um, throughout its tissue, throughout the branches, limbs, etc. If it catches that air bubble, it's basically not going to be able to utilize or uptake any water, especially in the clone stage. Um, any water you provide, it's not going to be able to be used because that air bubble is blocking the water from being moved. So as soon as you cut it, put it in a cup of water. Um, once you have all your clones cut, they're sitting in a cup of water, you're going to need to prep them for transplanting. And when you prep, prep them for transplanting, what you're going to do is you're going to um, basically trim off most of the leaves. Um, you can see here I have, and this is quite a bit of foliage, uh, more than I typically leave on a clone. But you can see here, like this is a good example, the leaves are actually cut. Um, and typically I wouldn't even have this leaf. Uh, I would kind of, you know, leave it more bare than it is. Um, so you're going to trim the leaves. They don't need a lot of, you know, leaf matter or leaf surface area at this point. Um, and as well, you're going to remove all the lower growth. So you see here, you can, I don't know if you can see, but there was a growth site here, a growth, little nubs of growth there. Um, I kind of completely stripped them down. So it's just the top. Um, so kind of like a lollipop, similar to that. You only want the top leaves left on the plant. Um, once you have the leaves trimmed, you're then going to cut the stem at a 45 degree angle, a very sharp angle. Um, when you have it cut, you're going to immediately dip it into rooting hormone, okay? Uh, you can use either rooting gel or rooting powder. Uh, I prefer to use Clonex gel. Um, that's I just have really good success using it, like 98 plus percent. If I were to cut 100, clone, 100 clones, I probably only have like one or two of them not root and, and make it into the next stage. Um, so, um, so you're going to, yeah, dip them in the rooting hormone, and then you're going to get ready to transplant them. Um, while you're doing your cutting and trimming and prepping them for transplant you're going to need to soak your plug whether it be rock wool root riot plugs i've been, even seen people use like um, peat based plugs um, i prefer these one and a half inch rock wool cubes um, they're small they're easy to use the trays are designed to hold designed to hold the one and a half inch plugs um, ro uh, root riot plugs will fit in there perfectly as well um, you're going to need to pre-soak these in a either just water or I like to use a very light um, nutrient solution, uh, very, very light. I'm talking like 0 0.2, 0 0.3 EC or, you, you know, three to 500 ppm. Um, and you want to keep the pH at 5.5 or 5.4, especially with rock wool. Um, rock wool is made from basically lava stone and is naturally alkaline. So it's going to have a really high pH. So you're going to need to kind of buffer that pH by soaking it in a solution that has a lower pH to kind of balance it out. Um, you're going to need to soak them until you basically see them stop bubbling. They've released all of the air and water has, you know, filled in all the gaps in, in the rock wool. Um, so you let those soak while you're basically either taking your cuttings and or prepping them for transplant. Um, you know, you dip it in the Clonex or the rooting gel, whatever you decide to use, and then you're going to plant them into the cube. Um, personally, I do not like to plant them into the designated hole if you're using rock wool. Um, there's a designated hole on the top here. Uh, I don't like using that just because it's a little loose around the plant a little bit, and I don't like air getting around there. I want it to be as snug or as tight as possible around the stem of the clone. Um, if you're using root riot plugs, um, they're much tighter, and you're, you're more than safe to you know put, put them, push them right down into the, the designated hole. Um, with rock wool, I don't like to do that. Um, one tip I have when you're push, putting them and transplanting them into the cube is to pay attention to how far you push them down. A lot of times people who are newer, who are newer to cloning will push them down far too much and they'll even have like a little nub poking out of the bottom. Um, you don't want that. You only want to push it down about halfway so the roots are able to take hold and really push out throughout the rock wool and push down through the walk, rock wool and take hold onto it, you know, really grab onto it. Um, if not, you know, if you push it through, chances are you're going to get that embolism. You're going to have air go in through the main stem of the plant and the plant's never going to root. It's just going to sit there either stagnant or completely wilt and die off altogether. Um, so once you have it transplanted, make sure you're pushing it down deep enough, but not too deep. 
and then you're going to go ahead and put it into your tray. Um, these next few steps are really crucial into rooting the clones. Um, cutting is kind of the easy part, um, cutting and transplanting. Getting the, the clones to root is a little more complicated. Um, you know, you're going to have to water and, and care for them pretty regularly, basically every day. Um, as you see here on this, the dome here, there's some vents on the very top of it. These vents can be opened and closed. So when you initially plant the clones and put them into the dome, um, you want the vents completely closed. And you keep them closed to basically let the humidity build. That way the plant has access to water through you know, the leaves um, and tissue because it has, like I said, there is no root system for the plant to really uptake water. Um, it is able to uptake some through that main stem, but it's only what you're able to provide it through the, through the plug you're using. So humidity is very, very crucial, especially in the first week. Um, so within the first week, you keep them completely closed. You're going to keep them under light and try to keep the temperature fairly warm between like 75 and 80 degrees is great. Um, you should see the dome kind of fog up and build humidity on the dome. That's, you know, pretty important too. Um, every day you should be opening the dome to check on the clones. Um, I like to call it burping them as well. You're basically opening it, uh, letting all the humidity off gas or exit the dome and around the plant, um, getting the plant some fresh air and basically allowing whatever roots are starting to develop to breathe. Um, so that's really important is burping and checking on the clones daily. Um, within the first week, you may need to give the clones some water, um, maybe once, maybe twice, you know, depending on the conditions and what's going on with in, with inside the dome, your light intensity, et cetera. Um, the light doesn't have to be super intense. You don't need it like a really strong grow light. Um, they have some small LED bars that are great for cloning, you know, magnetic ones or ones that you can connect to other things. Very easy to use. They even have ones that will connect to this tray and kind of go over the top of this dome and, you know, give the plants the perfect amount of lighting. Um, so temperature, make sure you're, they're staying moist. Um, after about that seven day mark, I like to start opening the vents just a little bit. Every like two days, I'll open them a little bit more and um, I'll start to let the medium dry back a little bit. So after the first week, I start to, you know, open these up more. I'll remove the dome. And when I check on them, I'll give them a little bit of extra time to breathe, kind of aerate the root zone, let them get some fresh air and um, allow them to dry back. So I won't water as much. Um, you don't do not want to let the plugs dry out. OK, there's a difference between drying out and drying back. Drying back is basically reducing the amount of water held by the plug. Drying out is completely drying out the plug and then the clone's gonna die. So you want them to dry back. Um, that's kind of how roots push, you know, roots push in source of a water and in, in search of a water source. So when they dry back a little bit, they use that oxygen and will kind of create channels and expand in search for water. So it really helps the roots push, letting them dry back. Um, part of drying back, like I said, is opening the vents regularly. Every two, three days, I open them a little bit more, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit um, until they're basically completely open. By the time they're completely open, chances are you have a root system built in the clone um, and you can start watering them regularly. You know, you don't want them to dry back as much since there is, you know, roots now pushing through the clone and a root system built in the plug. Um, you're going to need to water them more frequently. As they continue going, once I have the vents completely open, um, I will then start to remove the dome for longer periods of time. Um, I start off with like 10 minutes, set a timer on your phone. Cause if you, if you forget, you can definitely kill off a whole tray of clones. I've done that pr plenty of times previously. I've opened, you know, 20 trays of clones where that's, you know, a thousand clones. And I forgot about them for like a half hour in the facility running around doing other things. I come back and all my clones are toast basically. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on them. Don't, you know, set a timer on your phone or whatever you have just to make sure that you're giving them that 10 minutes and not overextending that time period. Um, so after the 10 minutes, then I'll go to like 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And once you start getting to around, you know, the 15 or 20 minutes of air daily, you can basically remove the dome and just let them grow with no dome. Um, especially once the roots are built, they don't really rely on the humidity as much. Don't need as much as humidity, especially since you're reducing, gradually reducing the amount of uh, humidity in it, in their environment. They're not going to rely on it as much. Um, and you can basically completely remove the dome at that point and just let them grow. Um, for the most part, uh, you can house a clone in a tray like this as long as they're not overcrowded and they're getting watered properly. Um, you can house a, and grow a clone like this 
I've done it for about four weeks. Um, and that's a really long time. I started to get some leaf burning and there was, you know, a, some slight issues, but the clone was still healthy. I still took to my transplant um, and everything went smoothly. So it's kind of a good way, you know, like I said, to perpetuate your grows and always have plants ready. Um, like I said, it is kind of a complex, you know, process and it does take, you know, about 14 to 20 days to root. Um, I've had roots develop within like seven days, you know, really quickly. Um, it kind of depends on the environment and the, the veracity of the cutting. Um, if you have, you know, weaker, thinner cuts, uh, they may take longer to root. They may not be as strong, et cetera. So, you know, give them more time. But uh, this is a great way to kind of, you know, keep genetics around, especially. This is how I perpetuate all my grows. Um, I've had this sticky bun strain for months now. I cut clones off of the plants that I lollipop and I still have them going. So I'm on like my fourth or fifth round of sticky buns now, cuttings. And, you know, these ones are doing great. They're, like I said, they're just pushing roots and um, soon enough they'll be ready to go in the Abbey. I'm just waiting for more space at the time. So, um, if you guys have any questions about cloning, um, feel free to ask them and I'm happy to answer them. Like I said, I think the biggest hurdle with cutting clones is having that designated space and or materials to cut clones. They do make smaller versions of these trays that you can fit in the Abbey, but you know, you can clearly see that this, it's about four inches too wide to fit inside the Abbey. So they do make smaller ones for, um, uh, smaller trays, domes, et cetera, that you will be able to fit in here. This is just what I've always used, what I had on hand. Um, and, you know, this is like all reliable here for me. Um, I'm a bit of a clone wizard, you know, in big facilities, when you were growing 5,000 plants at a time, and not only do you need to have that 5,000 plants ready to replace the plants that are going to be harvested going in the veg, but that means you also need to have those clones that are ready to place the plants in veg that are going into flower. So it's a big, you know, evolving circle. So on a weekly basis, you know, at any given time, I was cutting thousands of clones every week. Um, it's kind of necessary to have a perpetual grow and keep your cycle going. In commercial facilities, you know, downtime is lost money. You're paying for resources, utilities, uh, labor, everything you basically need to grow just on a much larger scale. So, um, you know, I've kind of really nailed down the cloning process and had really good success using rock wool cloning, et cetera. So if you guys have any cloning questions, want me to elaborate a little more or, you know, get into one, one facet more than, than I went over just now, feel free to ask down in the chat and uh, let's get to it. So we got, Where are we at? Rocco deleted a while ago, didn't know. What's that, Rocco? What's good, Rich Nice? What's up, Medi? Jorge Mejia, hey, how are you guys doing? Love the product. It's already in my cart. Was going to purchase, but I live in Connecticut. Was wondering if it would be a problem to grow in my part. Would I need a humidifier for my room? Um, not necessarily. There's plenty of Abbey growers who grow in their apartments. Um, you know, you can use a box to grow whatever you want to. Um, we do offer a humidifier that goes in the box. So you're not humidifying the whole room. Um, that would probably be a better fit for your situation. Jorge. What up, yeah, how McBig, could you give us a brief overview on your opinion on the pros and cons of humidity dome versus aeroponic cloning? Been playing around with the dome and looking into making aeroponic cloning setup. Sure, McVick. So um, aeroponic cloners are great. Um, they're really awesome. The only issue that I've had with them, I used to do all my commercial clones in aeroponics. Um, in my area, you know, it's I live in LA. It's a very warm climate over here. Um, I was having issues with keeping my water temperature proper um, and running a chiller for, you know, multiple easy cloners or aeroponic clone machines. It's expensive. And uh, it's expensive to run them. The electricity, you know, it's constantly running. And two, the chillers themselves were really expensive. Um, I did also have some issues with humidity where the plants were kind, kind of drying out a little bit. But that wasn't, you know, the biggest issue. The big, biggest issue was basically keeping the water at the right temp. Um, you need to keep it around like 70 degrees in order to properly build roots. So the water's holding enough oxygen to oxygenate build roots, et cetera. Um, that's my biggest drawback with aeroponic cloning. 
Um, this is a lot more cost effective. Um, in my opinion, it's quicker than using aeroponic roots. Um, and to me, you know, I, I've gone back and forth. I've done both. I just prefer this way more, um, especially when you're when you transplant. The thing about aeroponic cloning is it's great for DWC. But when, you know, on large facilities, when I was going into rock wool, I had to sandwich basically the roots in a rock wool plug and then plug that into the cube. And then there was a bit more transplant shock. So um, in my opinion, I like this method more. It's kind of tried true. It's more of an old school kind of classic method, um, but it works great. Uh, I, like I said, I get like 98% success rate. So um, that's just my my two cents on the topic. Laquan 843, how do I measure the EC? Uh, Laquan, your meter, if you have a four and one meter, um, your, me your EC may be displayed as USCM instead of EC. It's the same reading. It measures the exact same thing as EC. EC is kind of just the US version, uh, abbreviated version of USCM. So check your meter, um, click on the mode button, and you may see the USCM reading. That is your EC reading. Erwin M, do you put Rockwell with the plant in the Abbey? Um, Erwin, not necessarily, no. Um, you can, you know, if you want to kind of build up some rock wool around whatever the original rooting medium was to hold it place in the cup, you can do that, but it's not necessary. You don't need to, you know, put rock wool on top of it or on the bottom of it. Um, no. Rads, how long do I flush in DWC? Do I use the sealed water? How often do I change the water? Rads, um, there's kind of a couple different ways you can go about it. Um, I definitely use the definitely recommend using the cleanest, purest water available to you. If that's distilled water, then go with distilled water. Um, the way I like to flush is I like to change the water for the first three days or so um, of flushing. And I really like to keep an eye on that EC. Um, after about 24 hours of your first water, you know, flushing water change, you'll notice the EC, EC start to rise of the water. Um, and what's happening is the plant's leaching nutrients that it's stored in the root zone or in the tissue, it's leaching those, leaching those nutrients back into the water. Um, after about three days, you should see the EC start to drop and at a certain point it will level off. Once you see it start to level off and stop rising, it's kind of done rising. Um, at that point, you know, I like to stop changing the water and usually that's around day three and I'll give it another day or two of just the fresh water that's in there and then I'll chop the plant. Um, I like to change the water every three days just so the plant isn't leaching nutrients into the water and then trying to reuse them and reuptake them. And then you kind of have like, you know, an evolving circle or so. Um, however, you can just, you know, change, change the water for flushing, just add fresh water and let it ride out for about a week. Eventually the plant will kind of use up all the nutrients in the water and then, you know, the EC will level off and it's basically used all those stored nutrients and it starts to kind of consume itself. That's basically the, the purpose of flushing is to get all those nutrients and minerals out of the roots and plant tissue. Um, so that's another way you can do it. Um, if you do do it that way, I recommend topping off the water every couple days to try to help decrease the EC and make sure your water level staying proper. So there's a kind of your real two options as far as flushing goes. Danny KC. Wow. Great info for a virgin cloner. That's what's up, Danny. Yeah. Um, I hope I went over that well enough. Like I said, there's a lot of processes uh, or steps to the process. I have a full write-up if you guys, you know, are interested in cloning and want to start, you know, cutting your own clones. Um, you can go ahead and message me on the growth support um, chat and I'll, I can send you over that complete write-up. Erwin M, can you put the Rockwell and Abbey? How deep? Erwin, I already answered that question, my man. Uh, you don't need to add extra Rockwell, but if your plant's rooted in Rockwell, then yes, it's, it's safe to add into there. Um, you want to add it in so it, you have an air gap. So it's only sitting about, I'm not sure if you can see this. Um, you can see the black cube is only about exposed about half to a quarter inch. You only want about a half inch to a quarter inch exposed by the basket cutouts. You do not want to plant, put it in there so the plant is sitting on the bottom of the basket. Jay, I just had to replace my motherboard. Seems fine until I try to reconnect to my old growth. If I had to start over, that's okay. However, how do I update my new growth with the old data? Uh, and delete the old product that keeps crashing. Um, Jay, hit up uh, hit up support. Email uh, support at heyabby.com and they can help you uh, get your data back. Um, if they can't get your data back, then you may have to restart. Um, in that case, they can help you move move forward to the you know the current stage you're in. So if you were in veg, they can help you move you into veg. If you were in flowering, they can move you back into flowering. 
Um, I've seen both cases where people are able to get their old grow data back. And I've also seen people who have kind of just lost their data and had to continue uh, finishing the grow kind of fresh. Daniel, so hype with Germany, bro. What's the status? Will the discount see bill when Germany releases? Um, Daniel, I'm not 100% sure of what's going on with Germany yet. Um, I know we kind of talked on Discord about it. Um, I haven't gotten an update as far as that yet. Um, I apologize. I don't have a direct answer for you. I don't really you know, deal with orders, logistics, that kind of things. But um, I'm, I'm trying to find an answer for you, my man. I'll update you at, you know, as soon as I get an answer. Mehdi, any plans for an Abbey water chiller? Mehdi, it's something, um, you know, we've kind of looked into. Um, we have a lot kind of going on and in development. So that's definitely something that we're looking into and kind of looking into offering as a add on to the box, definitely. Marcel, what week should I start my clone if I want to use it after my grow is done? Um, that's tough, Marcel, because you're only going to have a certain amount of time to cut the clone. You know, you can only cut the clone when it's, you know, in within the latest you can cut it is the first week of flowering. After that, you're going to have hormonal issues and chances of growing a herm. So um, you only have about the first week to cut the clone into flowering. Um, so, you know, if you have an extra plant that you're cutting off of, then I would give it about three weeks. So right at about week six or seven, you're going to want to, you know, cut your clone and start doing it that way. The Quan A43, what range should your EC be in? Um, if you're using Abbey Nutrients, depending on, you know, what your water source is, you're looking at an EC between 1.2 and 1.7. McBig, 98% solid success rate. Yeah, it is. I appreciate that. <laughs> Just got to improve my own uh, process for the domes. Thank you, brother. No problem, Nick Vic. Uh, one thing I really, I really push a lot is the dry back. Um, you know, letting the medium dry back really helps develop the roots and getting them to push. Um, that's one thing that really increased my success rate with the clones. Roy, hi, Jay. Just bought a 420 box. What accessories should I get? Good question, Roy, especially since we got a big sale going on right now. It's a great time to kind of, you know, look into accessories. Um, there is some things that are, I think, are really mandatory. Um, one being the Bluetooth meter to be able to measure your, your EC and pH to allow you to balance your pH. That's absolutely crucial. Um, I think the starter accessory kit is another one that's really crucial to allow you to train your plant. Um, the more you can train your plant, the more the yield potential. So that's another big one. Um, I also really like using the fan, especially for flowering, um, just help increase the airflow, the more airflow you have around the plant, um, the more water and up nutrients it's going to uptake and move through the plant. So that's a really good one as well. Um, if you plan on being away from the box for, you know, extended periods of time, more than a day or so, um, you may want to look into getting the Habby bud cam just so you can kind of keep an eye on the plant while you're away, make sure nothing crazy is going on with the plant um, and it's staying healthy. Um, the humidifier is another good one. Um, I don't think it's super necessary, but it'll definitely help optimize your grow, especially during the veg stage. Um, being able to keep your humidity at a proper late, really uh, proper level, really helps the growth rate as well as the uh, you know developing strong, robust growth. Um, those are the ones that I I really highly suggest you look into, especially the starter kit and pH meter. Um, so yeah, good question, Roy. Wes Gaddis, what up, Wes? So if you buy a clone from the seed shop free will, will it be ready for the Abbey as soon as I get it? Yes, it will. Um, they will not sell you or send you unrooted clones. As soon as you get them, they're ready to rock. G Lab, what up, G Lab? If you're going to take a clone from a mother in the Abbey, what is the time frame to take it, or how many weeks into a veg should I take it, Jay? Um, personally, what I like, what I suggest, and what I think everybody should do is wait until you lollipop the plant. So just before, you know, you go into flower, um, lollipop the plant, lollipop the plant, and then use one of those weaker, thinner branches that you are going to remove, use that as a clone. Um, that's kind of the best way to do it. However, like I said, then you have, you know, a kind of nine, 10 weeks of taking care of the plant before you can put it in the Abbey. So you're going to need somewhere that where you can kind of keep it growing and keep it alive until it's, you have your Abbey space freed up and you can put one of the clones in. Um, that's kind of one of the biggest drawbacks, you know, I touch on with growing is you need to have a kind of a separate designated space, not only to root the clones, but make sure they're maintained and still um, growing in the time throughout the time that your current grow is still, you know, in process. 
Um, the latest you can push it though is to like the first week of flowering. After that, I do not suggest cutting a clone after the work, first week of flowering. Um, it may have hormonal issues and you may have, you know, it's going to have an, a highly increased chance of hermaphroditing on you. Um, so I don't recommend doing that. The Howl, when cloning, what stage of growth is best to harvest a clone? The Howl, I think I just answered that with G Lab support, but um, like I said, it's kind of a complex timing thing. Um, if you are going to cut your, your own clones, you got to have your, you know, separate space to house and grow your clone until it's ready to go um, into the Abbey. Your Abbey is kind of freed up and you can input your next clone. I always like to do it just before I flip the flower. Um, that's when I lollipop my plant. So I'll use some of those weaker branches that I cut off during lollipop as clones. Smiles. What do we want the EC and PPM to be for veg and flower? Smiles. Um, you're basically after the first feeding, your EC will stay the same throughout the grow. Depending on your water source, it'll be this, be between 1.2 and 1.7 EC. Um, there are some people who like to slowly bring up the EC value throughout the veg stage. Um, I personally don't like to do that. I like to, you know, after the initial transplant, I like to give it the full strength feeding throughout the entire, you know, growth stage. So throughout the entire grow, it's getting 1.2 to 1.7. Um, I personally uh, feed my plants a lot higher of an EC, but, you know, it stays the same from week two of veg until basically flushing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's see. Film F, is there any standing water in the bottom of the clone tray or do you wet the rock wool daily? Film F, <clears throat> no film F, um, neither actually. I don't, the rock wool doesn't need to be, you know, moistened daily, um, especially in the first like seven days. It, you probably only water at one time. And no, you do not want to have water sitting in the bottom of the tray. It's going to oversaturate um, the rock wool and you're going to start to get rot. You're going to get the stems rotting and they're going to be unable to, you know, build roots. Um, that also goes along with temperature. If your temperature is too hot, it's going to heat up the rock wool or plug that you're using and it's going to rot the stem. So, um, you know, temperature and humidity are really important with cloning. Nomadic Entrepreneur 22, how should a newbie get first clones? Um, nomadic, I would just honestly purchase them until you have like a good grasp on grasp on growing and kind of how the plant, you know, growth patterns, etc. what the plant needs. Um, and then you can, you know, kind of get into cutting your own clones. Like I said, it's not just an easy, th as easy as cutting it, putting it in rock wool, letting it root and then planting it. There's a lot of intricacies and nuances to, you know, uh, successfully cloning. Am Labs for first time growers, should I wait for the black edition model? Um, Am Labs or Am Labs, you know, that's, I can't really comment on that because it's really a financial thing. Um, if you're a first time grower, any of the boxes will be great, honestly. Um, but it really depends on your finances and, and what you feel comfortable spending money on. So I got you, Daniel. Uh, as soon as I hear back, I'll let you know, my man. Jack, are you able to use the grow box at all without Wi-Fi? Um, Jack, unfortunately, you're not. The, basically, the box operates off of, you know, internet. It needs internet to communicate with the app um, and kind of set the light schedules, change the, change the uh, growth stage, prompt you to do feeding, water changes, and et cetera, et cetera. Bonnie47, hey, hey, I'm in the second week of flowering stage. My plant is wet when I open the, up the box, but I don't have a humidifier on the box. So why are my leaves getting wet? So Bonnie, you may notice that those wet spots are in shaded areas. Um, in DWC, the plant transpires at a really high rate because there's so much, it has basically unlimited access to water and nutrients. Um, because of that, um, when a leaf gets shaded and it's transpiring at such a high rate, um, it may not have enough airflow and or light to evaporate that water off of the leaf. Therefore, you'll get some, you know, pooling or sitting water, standing water on your leaves. It's pretty normal. Um, if you can, you know, just wipe it off or shake it off gently. Um, it's really nothing to be concerned about because usually those areas are going to be shaded areas, like I said. Um, but you do want to try to remove it because if light does end up hitting those areas that are wet, um, the water is going to magnify that light and really intensify it. And it's going to start to burn the leaves. So... 
Um, good, really good question. Concentrate. Can you put USB adapter in the 420 edition to get more USB ports? Concentrate. Unfortunately, you cannot. Um, it's only going to support one accessory at a time. It's only a five volt um, plug. So even if you know you were able to use multiple accessories, it's not going to provide enough power to run multiple. Danny Casey, I ordered the Bluetooth pH meter. Do I have to wait for it to come from China? Uh, Danny, no, it should be one of our uh, stateside warehouses and shipped to you. Bill, what power magnifier do you suggest for checking trichomes? Bill, honestly, uh, we offer one on the Hey Abby website. Um, it's pretty good. It kind of connects to your phone. Um, if you want something that doesn't connect for your phone, I personally like using a, um, a lit jeweler's, lit, jeweler's loop. Um, it's basically a jeweler's loop that has a light on it. it. works really well. Hipsters and hippies, what up? Much love for everything you do for the community. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, hipsters and hippies. Uh, I do it for you guys. So it's it's. I appreciate the positivity. It's good to get good feedback like that. I really appreciate that. To Howell, how many nodes should be on harvested clones? Um, it, honestly, node count doesn't doesn't matter much because you're gonna be you know removing most of them anyways. But you want at least three nodes at the top of your clone. G Lab, hey Jay, hope all is well. Blessed. Appreciate that, G Lab. Thank you. <laughs> Bill, what should the RH be in flowering? Bill, so in the first half of flowering up to like about week six, you want to shoot for 40, between 40 and 50%. After week six, you're going to want to start reducing the humidity and cooling the box down. Um, if, the, if it stays too humid, the flower is going to try to basically stay open. It's not going to contract and really get hard and dense um, just because it's trying to, you know, transpire and let water move water throughout the flower. Um, so you want to reduce the humidity to about 30 to 40 percent once you get into like week late week set week six seven and eight or seven eight nine um lower the humidity and temperature to really create that dense harder structure smiles when do i add the monosilic the monosilic <laughs> monosilic acid but i think you're referring to monosilicate acid um do i need to use calmac Smiles, I don't think you need to use either of those unless you are, are you, if you're trying to use silica, um, then you should use it throughout the whole, whole grow. Um, silicate acid is a bit different. Um, so, you know, make sure you got the right product, but silica can be used throughout the grow and it should be the first thing you mix into your reservoir. Um, as far as CalMag, don't use CalMag unless you have a verified CalMag deficiency. People add in CalMag because they think it's going to help their plant. They hear that hydroponic plants need more CalMag. There's no use in adding it unless you have a verified CalMag deficiency. When you start adding extra things in without the plant needing it, you're going to start creating an imbalance of nutrients um, and it's going to create deficiencies and toxicities. All nutrients interact with each other called protagonist and antagonist nutrients. So if you have CalMag in an, in an, or calcium in a, um, CalMag, if you have CalMag in a surplus, it's going to affect other nutrients in your, in the nutrient, you know, the chart. Um, so, you know, only use it if you really, really need it. If you see a CalMag, calcium magnesium deficiency in the plant, even then when you use it, only use half of what the bottle or package suggests. Wacko, hey Jake, thanks for the topic tonight. I have been wondering how to clone. Been rocking from seed so far. May try clone on the next one. That's a side, Wacko. Cloning, uh, cloning is really an art, I must say. <laughs> the how, if clone is thriving, should we start training the clones while waiting to place in the Abbey? Yes, good question. Um, yeah, you can definitely start cloning or start training them as long as you have, you know, an established root system. Then absolutely, um, I I basically will fem or top my clones before they even go into the box. So yeah, um, that's one way you can do it. I don't recommend tying them down or you know scrogging them or trying to do any of that but fimming or topping is, is a great way to go about starting the training um, i recommend fimming over training that way you're not stressing it out so you know too much at such a young stage and small plant um, fimming could be your, your best way to go about that green what would the 1.2 e7 1.1 1 1.2 to 1.7 ec reading convert to in the u.s reading uh, green, it'll convert to 1200 or 1700. Um, like I said, EC is just the, the US version and it's abbreviated uh, of the US, USCM reading. 
Danny Casey, I'm using 20 ml hydrogen peroxide per tank of water. Do you need to use CalMag as well? Like I said, Danny, you don't need to use CalMag unless you have a verified CalMag deficiency. Unless you've, you know, confirmed it with me uh, or, you know, used the dichotomous key to confirm you have a CalMag deficiency, and then you can start using it. Um, other than that, you're just going to cause imbalances and issues within the plant. Laquan843, what's a good EC buffer? Um, Laquan, there's, I'm not really sure what you mean by EC buffer. Uh, elaborate on that a little bit so I can answer better. Brian K, how long should it take for a seed to sprout once a taproot has produced, been produced or come out? Brian K, so typically once you have a taproot in about seven to 10 days, you'll start to see the seed grow upwards um, and you'll start to see some growth. That's, you know, pretty general timeline. Danny KC, do we need to comment or something to be in the drawing? Yeah, Danny KC, uh, like two messages above you in the chat, there's directions or there will be directions. Sorry. I thought they already put in. Um, in about 10 minutes, yes, they're going to they're give you directions and, to enter the giveaway. Just pay attention to the chat, Danny. Film F, for the 420 edition, are there any other voice commands other than open the door? Uh, yes, you can tell it to breathe with you. Um, you can tell it, what else is there? I always forget the voice commands because I very rarely do I use them. Um, I forget, I'm sorry. There is a few more. I'll, I'm sure someone will post them down in the chat. I forget at the moment, I apologize. G Lab, yep, use it today. 400X, thanks Jay, no problem. Got you, breath. Steven, are there any clones to buy that don't come in soil so they're ready to go straight into the Abbey? Steven, yes, there is actually. Um, we've actually partnered up with Free World Genetics. Um, if you remember on our Discord, you can go into the clone seeds and clones um, section of the channel and check out, you know, uh, what they have to offer. They gave us the owner was nice enough to give us a list of recommendations of you know genetics that would grow well in the Abbey. Um, if not, just go on their website, click on the clone section, um, and check it out that way. But yes, Free World Genetics will ship you a hydroponic clone, rooted and ready to go. 718 Supreme 134 Hustler. What a name. I'm waiting on my arrival. I can't wait. That's what's up, Supreme Hustler. Congrats, man. Welcome to the family. Erwin M, if the clone comes in dirt, it, it, I know, keep the dirt in Abbey. Erwin, um, if your clone came in dirt, you need to follow some specific steps to kind of transplant it. Um, Transferring from the dirt into the abbey is really stressful on the plant since you're basically, you know, ripping its roots out and uprooting it from its original home. Um, so there are some specific steps. If you reach out to Grow Support, Irwin, um, I can provide you those steps how to transplant a soil clone into hydro. Laquan 840, 843, if the EC is off, how do I get it where it needs to be? Um, Laquan, there you go. Uh, you can, if you need to increase the EC, you just add nutrients into the water. That's basically what EC is. It's measuring the amount of dissolved nutrients or salts in the water. So if you need to increase it, add a little bit more of each nutrient. If you need to decrease it, you may need to remove some water and replace it with fresh water to lower the EC level. G Yuzumaki, do you continue to add nutrients as a plant uptakes it to keep the EC in range or why do you range or only when you do water change? Uh, good question, G. Uzumaki. Um, only at water change. You don't need to add in nutrients, you know, continuously throughout the week. Um, the plant will uptake water and nutrients together, so it's not going to just pull the nutrients out of the water. That's not kind of how the osmotic system works. Laquan, is it USCM or PPM? USCM is the equivalent of the EC reading. Steven, awesome sauce. That's what's up, Steven. All right, guys, stay posted in like two minutes here. We're going to give directions to enter the giveaway. And uh, yeah, make sure you guys enter the giveaway. It's free stuff. Why not, right? Any other questions, get them in now. We got about 10 minutes left on the stream. 
The giveaway is going to start in like a minute, so. Seven one eight Supreme Hustler. It's good that you bought accessories. I mean, the more accessories you have, just the better you're going to be able to control the environment. And the better environment the plant has, the more it's going to be able to grow. So I'm sure you didn't overdo it. Rick Meyer, any luck with the podcast? Yes, Rick, uh, I do have my account back. I meant to post an episode last week. Um, however, I just got carried away. I have a lot of going on, a lot going on outside of you know work and Abby right now. Both of my kids are playing baseball. I'm coaching one of the teams. Um, I play baseball as well. So I just, I've had a lot going on. I've kind of been absent-minded with the podcast, to be honest with you. Um, but I will be posting. I have an episode ready. Honestly, I just need to put the music behind it and then post it to the channel. So um, as soon as I find some time to do that, I will definitely be updating. Um, I kind of, you know, I'm going to be honest, I got a little discouraged with the podcast. I thought I was going to have, you know, more people watching or more people listening, excuse me. Um, but I will definitely get back to it. Hopefully I'll be able to get my list and count up and be able to spread more knowledge throughout the community. So stay posted and uh, I will definitely have an episode up soon for you, Rick. Tech. Tech buddy, do you think the humidifier is worth it? Absolutely. If you're having humidity issues, then yeah, absolutely. The humidifier is great, especially since you can set it up to run on you know parameters. Once the humidity drops down to this level, you can have it turn on. And once it goes above this level, you can have it turn off. Um, it's a great tool. What up, Stilts? Make sure you guys enter the giveaway. Directions are in the chat now. Live. Get it. Erwin, do I need a starter kit with a new clone in dirt? Erwin, the starter kit's going to help you throughout the growth. So, yeah, I definitely suggest getting that. Captain J, the best way to lower humidity. Um, you may want to increase the exhaust fan level. If on the, on the home screen of the app where you can kind of view your plant, there's a tab that says environment. If you tap on that tab, you can turn the fans off of the auto setting and increase the exhaust fan. It'll help, you know, vent out some of that humidity you're having an issue with. Danny KC, thank you for doing this. I have watched several times after getting my OG and you're truly a wealth of knowledge. My plan, my pleasure, Danny. I'm happy to help, man. If you ever need anything, Danny, feel free to message me on the grow support chat, bro. I'm happy to help you out with any anything you have, you know, any issues with. Jenny, my humidifier keeps leaking. Is there anything I can do to stop it? Uh, Jenny, make sure you're not overfilling it. I know a lot of people fill it right to the brim. Um, that's, you know, the most common thing I see with the leaking humidifiers. If that doesn't fix it, then reach out to support at heyabby.com and they'll be able to take care of you there. Green, the clones from Free World come from Rockwell. However, they use a bigger plug than the one and a half. They use a two inch plug, um, which is great for, you know, mailing, transporting. It just allows more moisture to be retained to keep the clone healthy while it's shipping. Um, but you will need to peel a little bit off the sides for it to fit in the Abbey basket. Just a heads up. St 
stilts, how crucial is having a battery backup of some kind? Stilts, I mean, it depends. If you have, if you often have power issues, power outages, et cetera, then it's definitely going to be worth the investment. So, you know, if you have an outage or an issue within the area, um, you know, your plant's not going to die. That's, you know, if you, if that's a common issue that you experience, and I definitely recommend getting some type of backup. Love to grow. Hey, Jay, what do you think about the great white plant for you? I use HydroGuard and Silica. When would you add it? Um, the great white, um, you know, the only great white product that I'm really familiar with is the, uh, like the root booster. I forget what it's called. Um, if I'm sorry, I'm not super familiar with it, um, but I'm not 100% sure that you'll be able to need it. You'll be able, you, you will need it if you're using silica and HydroGuard, I believe it's going to be the same thing as HydroGuard, just in a powder form. Um, or, you know, even the liquid one, it's going to be the same thing as HydroGuard. So I think you're good to stick with just the HydroGuard. Love to grow. Concentrate. Sorry, I had to refresh. What do you reckon for new growers? Sorry for asking again. Um, concentrate. Definitely the, the four in one meter. Um, that's really crucial. The starter accessory kit with all the training materials um, and the fan. Those are my like top three must haves. No problem. Love to grow. All right. Congrats to fam nemesis and bill. Congrats y'all. Uh, make sure you email your info, your shipping info and first and last name to support at heyabby.com. Make sure, you know, make sure you guys are sending your info over. If not, we have no way of, you know, sending you your package. So um, congrats to our winners. Make sure you shoot us your info and we'll get those sent out as soon as possible. Um, that's about a wrap for today. I appreciate everybody for being here, being a part of the live. I hope you're able to learn some about cloning and hopefully you'll be able to cut your own clones. Uh, like I said, it's a little bit more nuanced and detailed than one would think. Um, especially, you know, if you only have one growth space. So if you guys need any other further information or want my full write up written directions on cloning, um, reach out to me on the growth support and I'll get those over to you. Um, thank you again for everybody for asking your questions. This only does, this not only benefits you, but it benefits the community and everybody that tunes in. Um, so I really appreciate you guys. Congrats to our winners, fam nemesis and bill. Like I said, make sure you send us your info to support at heyabby.com so we can get you your prizes as soon as possible. Uh, make sure you guys take advantage of the 420 sale. They're the largest discounts we've offered to date. So if you guys need something or looking into considering getting a box, now's the time to do it. It's the cheapest you'll ever be able to find at Hey Abby. Um, I appreciate you guys again. Thank you, everybody. Um, tune in on Thursday, same time, same place, 4 p.m. Pacific time. Catch me on the website, Instagram, YouTube. Um, so, yeah, I'll see you guys on Thursday. Love you all. Appreciate you all. Grower J signing out.